الخليل 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 عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear sisters and brothers First of all, Ramadan Mubarak, I pray, Rabbi, you're all doing well and that you're reaping the fruits of these very, very blessed days, inshallah. Now, I'm very, very honored to be joining you from across the globe on the, you know, the other side of the, of the ocean. Alhamdulillah, I'm not quite sure where the majority of people are joining from, but I'm assuming the UK. Um, and, you know, Alhamdulillah, it's such an honor to be in the presence of sisters and brothers that, you, you know, are united through La ilaha illallah Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. And I'd like to say that, you know, we, we are all tested in one way or the other. So when we speak about remedies for the hearts, you know, and we understand that we are in this dunya to be tested, right? And that when you are tested, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who are tested that, that they are dear to him. He says that, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in the, you know, verily with greater rewards come greater trials. So the more we are tested, the rewards are bigger, right? And verily, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a people, right, he will test them. When Allah loves a people, he will test them. Whoever is pleased will be satisfied and whoever is displeased will have indignation, right? And subhanAllah, when we speak about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to understand what that entails, right? When Allah loves us, he tests us. What does it mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, <clears throat> he calls upon Jibreel alayhi salam. And he says, Ya Jibreel, inni uhibbu fulan, I love so and so. So love that person. And so Jibreel alayhi salam loves you. And it doesn't just stop there. Allah's love does not stop there. And then Jibreel alayhi salam starts to announce in the heavens, you know, Ya Malaika, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so. So love him or love her. And then the angels love you. And it doesn't just stop there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places qabul or acceptance for you on earth. Everyone who encounters you just loves you for the sake of Allah. And you have no idea why, subhanAllah. And this is such a reward for those given such hard tests and manage it with, you know, with acceptance and yaqeen, certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and that we don't know. And subhanAllah, despite having so many things in common between us, right? Alhamdulillah, we are all believers, right? Mu'mineen and mu'minat, and, you know, alhamdulillah, we're all majority here, sisters, I believe in faith. Yet, subhanAllah, each and every single one of us has lived or is still living a very different experience from the person that is, you know, in the picture next to you, at least here in the Zoom meeting, right? Each one of us is going through a different, um, you know, test or trial. Some of us might be tested through wealth. Some might be tested through their health. Some might be tested through their spouse or their children, their parents, their job, their faith. SubhanAllah, each and every single one of us has their own story to tell, their own pain, right? That they lived through or are still trying to heal from. And this brings me to what I would like to start with today, bi'idnillah. And that is how we find remedies for these hearts. Healing his heart and seeking the remedy through him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this can only start if we kind of comprehend that we are all here on this earth to be tested. This is a haqiqah, it's a reality that we have to accept. It kind of comes with the package. This dunya is a place of test. It's not your eternity, it is not your akhirah, and it's not going to last forever. Whatever it is that you are going through. I promise you, it is not going to last forever, right? It will come to an end, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this, but sometimes we read through the Quran without kind of like, you know, paying attention or focusing on what we're reading, especially in these days of Ramadan, we're trying so hard, you know, to kind of like finish one khatma and a second khatma and a third khatma. And sometimes we kind of overlook over the meaning and the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach us. He subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, right? Wa 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 
Allah tells you, I will certainly test you. The lamb here, you know, it's like, lamb al qasam, I, I promise you, I will, you know, test you with a touch of fear, right? We're always worried about something or the other. Our children, are they going to pass? Our marriage, our kids, our health. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? There's always this constant fear, subhanAllah, not knowing what's going to happen. And that should not be the state. But Allah tells us, I will test you with a touch of fear and famine and loss of property, life and crops. And then he continues saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but give good news to those who patiently endure, right? What do they do, Ya Allah? What do these people do with Sabreen? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُمْ When they are faced with a disaster, what do they say? They acknowledge instantly that they belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We live on his earth, breathe his air, live off his sustenance. We belong to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are his. He can do with us whatever that he pleases, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa inna ilayhi rajaun, and that we'll truly return to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what is the reward? Allah tells you what the reward for this is when you are hit by a calamity and you say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun. He says what? Ula'ika alayhim salawatum min rabbihim wa rahma wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. The ones who are able to acknowledge that whatever happens is from Allah and that it's good for you, they are the ones who will receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings and rahmah. Imagine just the barakah and the mercy and the rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending upon you the minute you acknowledge that inna lillah, that you belong to Allah, that whatever has come, it's good, right? So we will be tested and there is no questioning. But how we handle these tests is totally up to us, right? If we kind of have this mindset set and we start work, you know, working on shifting the way you think that whatever you are going through, right, is a door through which you will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you attain that closeness to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Be it a situation that is difficult or a human being that is a really challenge to every good quality in your heart. If you can succeed in doing that, right, in seeing these people or these situations as doors through which you attain closeness to him, you will find nothing, wallahi, other than words of shukr and hamd, gratitude, coming not just from your tongue, but from your heart, right? Whatever it is that gets thrown at you, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And that is the attitude of a believer, right? The Prophet wasallam says, how wonderful is the case of a believer? There is good for him in everything. And this applies only to a believer because we all say, you know, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we're all Muslims, but a believer is a little bit higher. It's a notch up because if prosperity attends him, he expresses gratitude to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is good for him. And if adversity befalls him, he endures it patiently, and that is better for him, right? Ajaban li amri mu'min, inna amrahu kullahu khair, right? We all claim to be from those who believe. We all say, yes, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that is the case, then we have to start to train ourselves to be from those who express gratitude in times of adversity more so than in times of prosperity. SubhanAllah, it really is a matter of training yourself and how to shift your mindset from focusing on what you don't have rather to what you do have, right? Even if you don't have that which your heart desires or believes it's what you need in order to be happy and grateful, right? So many times we think that I need to have this something, whatever it is, I need to have this spouse, I need to have this child, I need my job to be so and so in order for me to be happy, right? SubhanAllah, we have to learn how to move beyond our desires that blind us from seeing the endless blessings that we are immersed in that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Training our hearts to be the best of hearts, grateful hearts, qulub shakira lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the strongest forms of ibadah, of worship. Because when you start focusing on what you have, right, what he subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, you actually start realizing 
how close Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for you, how much he cares for you and how much he has bestowed upon you and that only can strengthen your connection with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can only increase your love to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times, many times we are blinded by what we desire, what we want to have in our lives, right? We want to have this, we want to have that, right? So what I want to ask you to do for a moment here with me is to stop just for one minute. And I want each and every single one of you to think for just one minute for everything that you really have been longing for. Now, I know we're in Ramadan, we're in the last 10 days, and I'm sure a lot of you have that list of du'as. Maybe you have five things. You think to yourself, if these five things or 10 things, maybe, you know, some for some people, it's one thing. If this one thing is removed from my life, or if this one thing is given to me, then everything is going to be okay. I want you to think of five things that are on top of your du'a list that you've been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, or five things you know that if you had them, all your problems will be gone. Can you think of those five things? Yes, no? <laughs> you wanna raise your hands maybe? <laughs> okay, if you can think of five things, perfect. Now let's put those five things on the side, right? Now, I want you to think of all that has been blocking your ability to see what you actually have and put those on the side, right? I want this, I want that. Now, let's start listing in our heads the endless blessings you are in right now. Can you all take a deep breath with me right now? Like a, a nice deep breath. Yes, you can, right? Were you able to breathe on your own? Yes, you were, alhamdulillah. Without even having to sit, you know, think about it. You don't have to think, oh, wait, which muscle do I pull? Am I inhaling or exhaling? You just were able to breathe, you know. Oh, what happened? Oh no. alaikum. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I think I got kicked out or something. Um, uh, sorry, you still there? Yes, I got kicked out for a minute. I'm not quite sure what happened, but I'm back. Alhamdulillah. Sorry yeah. about that. So again, we're back again to acknowledging the blessings, right? We are able to breathe on our own. Alhamdulillah. You are all able to hear me right now. Say Alhamdulillah. You're able to see me right now. Alhamdulillah, right? Alhamdulillah. So many things. If I ask you, can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you breathe? Do you have a roof on your head? Can you have something to eat just to suffice your hunger? And the answer every time will be yes, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah, a million times for blessings we have that we don't even acknowledge as blessings. Things that we take for granted. We don't even think about them as blessings. We're just used to them. We're used to this blessing to the point that we don't even see it as a blessing, right? Alhamdulillah, that is the attitude of a believer. And this is one of the main reasons of abundance in risk, subhanAllah, in sustenance. Just like Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam, who was given wealth and power like no other man who ever tread all, or even, you know, tread the earth, right? He had the ability to control the wind so he could travel at speeds that no other prophet or any creation could, right? The jinn and the animals were just waiting at his command. His ability to mold copper and make swords and basins to feed the poor endless blessings subhanAllah Sayyidina Sulaiman had and the scholars you know say the secret behind this extreme wealth was his shukr his gratitude for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right he said Qala Rabbi an alayya wa ala wa an tarda wa Despite all the blessings he had, he did not say, well, oh, wait a minute, I have this, you know, this immense wealth, you know, let me go spend on this and spend on that, which is fine. Let me go travel here and do this and do that. He acknowledged, yes, I have all this wealth, but he acknowledged it was a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he utilized it to help those who are around him. He utilized it to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are going through difficulty right now, shukr is your first remedy. This is the first remedy for healing those broken hearts. Acknowledging what you have rather than dwelling over what you don't have, right? We just listed a few seconds ago the things that we think we need in order to be happy, right? Those four or five things. And then we listed like a thousand blessings. So many things we have, alhamdulillah. Let that 
overcome this, right? The, the million things we have, you know, overpower the things that we want. The second remedy is having yaqeen, certainty, right? That anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you through is khair. It is good for me, even if in its outer appearance, it doesn't seem so, right? It doesn't seem so. The illness, it doesn't seem very good. It doesn't feel good, right? The trouble, the children, the this, the that. It, in the outer appearance, it's not good, right? Injustice, hurt, loss, divorce, in a manner that doesn't abide by the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kids that are struggling, whatever it is, we have to have yaqeen that it is khair, right? And we have to be very careful because in these situations, if we do not have that yaqeen, that lack of gratitude starts to stem. And we fail to see the good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr that he has destined for us. We fail to think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We don't have the husn al dhanni billah when we are tested through very difficult things. And we will be tested in what's important to us, by the way, right? If you don't care for wealth, Allah is not going to test you in wealth. He'll test you in what you are concerned about, what's important to you, subhanAllah. And we start failing to see his blessings that we just mentioned. We fail to comprehend when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And I'm going to stress on this part. Perhaps you dislike something which is good for you. And perhaps you like something which is bad for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. Allah knows and you do not know. Say alhamdulillah. Many times, you know, things befall us and we don't understand why, right? How or how could there be good in this situation for me, for me right now? And our limited ability to comprehend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr leads our weak anfus to kind of start questioning like, why ya Allah? Why me? Why am I going through this? And our lack of yaqeen and our lack of gratitude overpowers our ability to see or understand the hikmah, the wisdom behind where he subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us. And if subhanAllah, it's like a risha or a veil that covers and hides the beauty of all that has been given to us. And I'm going to share with you a really uh, nice story that subhanAllah, it's a great reminder for myself. And I always share it with, you know, my friends and I remind myself of it very often, right? It's kind of reminds us that whatever it is that we're going through, it is hype. Now, a long time ago, maybe some of you know this story, but I still will share it because it's a good reminder. So once there was this king, right? And he had an advisor that kind of accompanied with him everywhere that he went. Now, this advisor, every time something happened, whether it was good or bad, he would say what? Perhaps there is good in it. And it kind of started really bothering the king. Like, you know, how could there be good in something that is bad? And so one day the king and his advisor went out and they were hunting. And as the king was pulling back his bow, right, and from the, the arrow, I apologize, it flipped backwards and it cut his thumb off. And instantly, the counselor said what, or his advisor, la khair, perhaps there is good in it. Now, the king was extremely, extremely furious. And he was like, how could there be good in my finger being cut off? I just lost my thumb. And so immediately, he ordered that the advisor would be thrown into jail. And then when he was thrown into jail, right away, what did his advisor say? Perhaps there is good in it. And the king was even just, you know, he was like frustrated by the man. SubhanAllah, a couple of days pass by, the king decides to go out and to start hunting. And as he is out, he gets captured by a tribe that worships idols. They caught the king and they decided to offer him as a sacrifice for their gods. And as they were preparing him, they look at him and they find that he is missing a thumb. And they say, wait a minute. We cannot, you know, offer a defective, you know, sacrifice to our gods. He's no good. Let him go. The king immediately understood what the advisor meant when he said, perhaps there's good in it. He ran back to the advisor in the jail or in the prison and he told him, I understand now what you meant by perhaps there's good in it, but how could have there been good in you being thrown into prison? It doesn't make sense. Like you're, you're thrown into jail, halas, you're going to spend the rest of your life there, and you're saying perhaps there's good in it. And the advisor smiles and he says, well, whenever you go out hunting, I usually go out with you. And if I were with you, right, and they caught you and you found they found your thumb was missing, they would have taken me as a sacrifice. So perhaps there is good in it, subhanAllah. Now, taking this story and putting it in the back of our minds, subhanAllah, 
we have to ask ourselves, do we understand that whatever it is that you are going through, that perhaps there is good in it, right? There must be good in it. And Ibn Ata is like, and that he says something beautiful. He says, Perhaps he has given you, and in this giving, there is deprivation. And perhaps he has deprived you, and in this deprivation, there is giving. And when he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, opens the doors of understanding deprivation, this deprivation becomes the utmost giving, right? So many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds back something from us and we don't understand in the moment. And sometimes down the, you know, maybe a year down the road, a couple of months down the road, we realize and we look back that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not deprived us at that moment, things would have not looked very good for us now. That, that deprivation was actually giving because Allah knows the hal, the state of our hearts. He knows that perhaps if he gave you the something at that time, it would have not been good for your heart. It would have not benefited you or got you closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Think to yourself for a moment whenever you're going through a difficulty and ask yourself, who is it that is handling my affairs? Who is it that's giving me and who is it that is holding back from me? Who is doing the deprivation, right? And it's Allah. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-alim, the most knowing. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows what you're going through, who knows what is good for you. He's Allah al wakil the one who handles all your affairs, the one who has mulk al samawat al ard right? Or khaza'in al-samawat al He has the treasures of the heavens of the earth, right? The one who says, and you know, he can hear you, he can see you, he's closer to you than your, you know, your juggler vein, aqrabu al habl al warid you know, right here, this vein over here. That's how close Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And he's al kareem the most generous, the one who has power over everything, who says, kun fayakun, be, and it is. That is who is handling your affairs. And subhanAllah, I was just listening to this beautiful story by, you know, um, Sheikh da or Dr. Amr Abdul Kafi Shata. He's a, you know, one of the big scholars back in Egypt. I don't know if any of you guys know about him or not, but he was saying this story that happened to him back in the 80s or the 90s, I can't remember. And his teacher was, you know, Sheikh Muhammad Mutwali Sharawi, rahmatullah Ali, huge Egyptian scholar, right? And he said, Sheikh Ahmed is saying, I was going through a very, very difficult test, right, in my life. I was like, I've come just to a dead end. I did not know what to do. And he said, I went to Sheikh Sharawi and I told him what was going on. And Sheikh Sharawi, he says that Sheikh Sharawi responded to him saying just a couple of words. He said, Basically, he's asking him, what you are going through, is Allah a witness and aware of it, or is he not aware of it? And he said, I thought to myself for a moment, and I responded, of course, ya maulana, of course, Allah knows of it. And so Sheikh Sharawi responded to him and said to him, وَهَلْ تَظُنْ and do you even think for a split of a second that a Rahman, a Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not want what is good for you? Ya Allah. Now, ask yourself whatever it is that you are going through right now. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aware of it and aware of what you're going through or not? Of course, he is subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, al-Rahman, al-Rahim, cannot want anything for you other than that which is good for you. So quickly to recap what we said so far, right? We will all be tested. It's a reality, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those whom he loves the most, right? How we have to work on shifting our mindset, right? And we started saying that we will shift our mindset through remedies of the heart. And we said the first remedy was shukr or gratitude. And the second one is having yaqeen that whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for us is good for us. And Allah knows and we do not know. The third remedy I would like to share with you is setting your priorities straight, especially in these days right now. And I want you to listen to this part. It's so important, wallahi. Listen with masama al kulub, the hearing of your hearts, not just the ears, right? Remind yourself that the most important relationship you can ever have or that defines you, who you are, is not a relationship with a makhluq, with a creation, a man, a human being. The most 
important relationship you can ever have. And it is the only thing, and I'm going to repeat it, it's the only thing that should ever define you and your self-worth is your relationship with your khaliq, with your creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sheikh Muhammad Shinawi, I don't know if you guys are aware of him here, you know, in the in UK or not, but Sheikh Muhammad Shinawi says something beautiful in regards to this. He says, you might be married to the worst man ever, right? Like Asya alayhi salam, who was married to Pharaoh, the worst of creation. But it did not change her and her lo loyalty and love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you might be married to the best of men, right? Like the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still not enter heaven, like the wife of Lut, Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Or you might not be married at all to any man like Maryam alayhi salam and Allah made her rank higher than any woman on the earth. Know your priorities, love and trust is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. SubhanAllah, such a profound reminder. And I would like to share with you, you know, wrap up, we're not, not really wrap up, but kind of yeah, getting closer to the end, but share with you the story of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ta'if, right? And we all know that Al-Mahbub and what he went through from being ridiculed by the leader of Ta'if and humiliated with stones thrown at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until his blood reached his garments or drenched his garments. Sorry, I apologize. And here is a lesson for every single one of us in times of such desperation and darkness and, you know, in times of hurt and humiliation, in times of being alone, like he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beautiful words that came out of the mouth of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a beautiful yet powerful dua to guide us right now in the time that we live in through our difficult times. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma inni ashku da'af ilayka, ilayka da'af kuwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala al-nas. Ya arham al-rahimin, anta rabbul mustada'afin wa anta rabbi. Right? You know, only to you do I complain of my weakness. To you, Ya Rabb, right? My lack of resources and my lack of respect in the eyes of people. Oh, most merciful of all those people of showing mercy. You are the Lord and caretaker of those who are weak, Ya Rabb, of those who have been oppressed and wronged, Ya Rabb, and you are my Lord. You know, and then Sayyidina Muhammad asks Allah, who will you hand me over to, Ya Allah? Who will you hand us over to, Ya Allah? Will you hand us over to a heartless enemy who will abuse and mistreat me? And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, continues saying that something that is just so profound, right? As long as you are not upset with me, Ya Rabb, I don't care how these people treat me. Your protection is all that I need. Ya Allah. As long as Allah is not upset with us, nothing else should matter. As long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala radi anna, he's pleased with us, nothing else matters. Subhanallah. This is what we need to walk away with. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what defines you and your worth, right? How he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you, not how humans see you. And my teacher always used to say there are two types of relationships, right? A horizontal relationship and a vertical one, right? The vertical relationship is your relationship with the Khaliq, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, right? And the horizontal is your relationship with the makhluk, the creation. And he always used to say, when you fix your vertical relationship with Allah, it has to, it has to manifest in your horizontal relationships. It has to manifest at work with your spouse, with your community, with your children, with yourself. You have to see the beauty of it outcome or the outcome of it in your horizontal relationships. So always place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. And the final remedy that I would like to share with you, bi'iznillah, is sabr. Sabr jameel, beautiful patience and forgiveness, right? Now, in regards to forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require from you to forget or not to seek, you know, retribution or retaliation. That's not what's expected of you, right? But you have to work on yourself in regards to forgiveness. Because when you don't forgive, and this is a beautiful analogy, I have a, a lovely friend here, Ya Rabbi, Allah, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, guide her heart to Islam, say, I mean, in these blessed, you know, uh, minutes, right? I know it's before iftar and it's pouring out here. I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder, but, you know, she used to tell me, you know, she says, not forgiving is like drinking poison while praying that the one who hurt you dies poisoned. SubhanAllah. When you don't forgive, you're only hurting yourself, right? 
forgive yourself, forgive others so that you can attain that inner peace, right? Don't sit and dwell over, you know, would have, could have, should have. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, happened. A test and it's over. I need to move on. I need to continue striving because the clock, subhanAllah, is ticking, right? And our meeting with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, only gets closer and closer with every single breath that we are taking. Remember, we are only here in this dunya for a very short period of time. We can't just sit and cry over spilt milk, as they say, right? That is not the attitude of a believer. Yes, we can grieve. That's perfectly fine. Take your time to grieve. Take your time to regain your strength, to kind of realign yourself and to reset and to strengthen your To regain your strength and to heal. But make it short and quick. Be focused. Say bismillah. Alhamdulillah, I can breathe. Alhamdulillah, I have a roof on my head. Alhamdulillah, I have the ability, you know, to, to say Alhamdulillah. I have a beautiful sahaba. I have a community. I have Allah who is my Lord, the sustainer, the wahab, the giver of gifts. He is my Rabb. And that in itself is a healing for the heart to know that Allah is my Allah. Right? And I want you to look back again at the story of Ta'if, right? And what they did to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When this happened, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down angel Jibreel alayhi salam and he told him, he told give the Prophet alayhi salam the choice. If you would like, I can just crush them. I'll close up the mountains on them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, no, ya Rab, la, ya Rab, la. Perhaps out of their descendants will come someone who will say, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Such a level of forgiveness. And look at the outcome of this forgiveness. Their descendants, all of them, entered Islam. The best of Muslims. Now look at your situation and see what the outcome of your forgiveness could be generations down the road. Perhaps you will not see the impact of your forgiveness right now. And perhaps you'll live to see it. You never know. But there always has to be an outcome for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Itfa billeti hiya ahsan, fa ida ledi baynaka wa baynahu adawa tuka and nahu waliyun hameem, right? Respond to evil with what is best, right? Then the one you are infused with will be like a close friend. And wallahi, I know it's not easy. I know it's easier said than done. I know when we're in that position and that person specifically is testing you in every possible way, perhaps there's, you know, injustice or, you know, oppression, whatever it is, or unkindness, whatever, right? I know it's not easy. It could be probably the most difficult thing you would have to bring your nest to do. It requires a lot of self-restraint. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues saying in the following verse, Right. This cannot be attained except by those who are patient. You have sabr. You know you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. This human being is just a door. It's just a, a door through which I can attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Right. And those who are only patient and those who are truly fortunate. So, the ability to have patience over the evil of others, to look at human beings as doors through which you attain closeness. And I'm not me meaning to take abuse because that's a different story, right? Allah does not accept you to be in an abusive situation and say, oh, this is sub. That's not sub. Here you need to find counseling. You have to figure out oh, a safe way out for yourself. What I'm talking about, sub and just regular things of life, right? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, when you have that sabr, there's unbelievable reward for patience. What does he say? Indeed, the patient will be given the reward without account. Can you just imagine this with me, right? Coming on the day of judgment, and just because a little patience in this short-lived dunya, just because you hung in there just a little bit more and said, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, I have sabr over whatever you have given me, right? It could have been so much worse, Ya Rabbi, right? Just because you continuously reminded yourself that my reward will be without account, like just take. You come on the day of judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, here, take, right? And take some more and more. You were from a sabirun. You were from the patient. And can you imagine what giving without account might look like when the giver is who? 
Al-Kareem, the most generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah. What kind of giving would that be? What kind of giving would that be? Think to yourself if you ever went to someone and they showed you karam, they showed you generosity in their home and you know they're bringing you this and they're bringing you that and they keep just bringing out things and trying to make you sit in the most comfortable place, the cleanest place, they're honoring you, they're, you know, they're just so generous. And this is a, a creation of Al-Kareem subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what would be the giving of Al-Kareem look like without account? Now, inshallah, I'm going to recap. I know you guys are getting closer to your iftar time. Bismillah. Let's quickly recap what we said. We said tests are inevitable, right? This is the dunya, the place of work and trials. We strive and we just have the sabr, inshallah, right? We have to know that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, having the yaqeen, shukr, forgiveness, and sabr, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is so generous and he grants us beautiful chances. You're, you know, beautiful gatherings, just like that we are in right now. This in itself is a na'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with one another, to be reminded in these most beautiful days, the last days of Ramadan, khalas, right? And today is an odd night, right? Today is a night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, I pray for Sayyidatul Qadr that he grants it to each and every single one of us. Right. It's a good day and it's a good time to remind ourselves that whatever it is that you are going through, that Allah will never, ever burden you with more than what you can bear. He made you. He knows what you're made of. He knows what your heart is made of, what you can and cannot take and how far you can handle. Right. Remind yourself in these you know, final moments before iftar, inshallah, that la yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah will never burden you with anything more than what you can take. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, accept from all of you your ibadah and your siyam and your qiyam and your fasting, Ya Rabb, and make everything that you do a means of attaining closeness to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and heal all our hearts in these beautiful and blessed days of Ramadan, Ya Rabb. Ameen, ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh wa barakatuh wa barakatuh wa barakatuh for those beautiful, um, you know, I think it was very, very important reminder, mashallah. Uh, many sisters were commenting saying that they needed this um, and, uh, you know, that this will come at the right time. And obviously, you know, when we're discussing and talking about uh, remedies of a broken heart, or we're talking about these topics that perhaps people may think that it's not sort of entirely related to Ramadan, being that we're in Ramadan. Um, but I felt like, you know, subhanAllah, this is very important because as I said, and even when we spoke to people, is that it's something that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, Ramadan or not Ramadan, it doesn't matter. We deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's an important aspect of our life. And it's actually, it sort of interlinks with, 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 with our ibadah, everything around us, our heart, really the spiritual aspect, the tool that we have. That we was Allah but this, why is this we here? Um, and uh, you know again inshallah just to sort of a recap on the important pointers here for all uh, the beloved brothers and sisters that have joined here today and that is focusing on the eternal instead of the temporary remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is going to happen in our future and that is our future is the afterlife our future is not what is going to be in this life these 40 30 10 15 whatever years we have left in this dunya it is in the afterlife reconnecting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we've done many many events many talks on reconnecting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because personally we feel that this is the most important your connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there then subhanallah you know we got to start working towards it you know we as human beings we need someone we need something to latch on to we need that companion and who is with us at 4 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning? It's only one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ladhi la ilaha illahu. Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that doesn't sleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everlasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. He's always watching us. So we must focus and we must try to understand and remind ourselves constantly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is there with us all the time, watching us, there for us, and always there when he says, and I, and I did this series during Ramadan, I did a few episodes on mercy of Allah. And we spoke about, you know, subhanAllah, we, we heard the verse, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that you come to him and you come with a good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you 10, will multiply by 10 folds. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you come 
man ja'a bi sayi'a you come with one bad deed and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only give you one bad deed on the scale subhanallah but then what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also say illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha what happens if you turn you repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly in your heart that you want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say fa'ulaika yubaddilu allah sayi'atihim hasanat Allahu Akbar. Look at this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will turn this bad deed into a good deed. Subhanallah. Who is the most merciful? Who is the most forgiving? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are talking about these topics, and I just wanted to, you know, reiterate this point, uh, you know, before we end off, and that is our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed is the most, I'd say the, I call it the remedy, the most you know uh the, the remedy that is the, the the biggest impact that has the biggest impact there is no other bigger remedy or ingredient that is going to cure your heart except for reconnecting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my dear beloved brothers and sisters in islam find your passion that soothes your heart adequately that you know if you're looking and you're and you're and you're finding your passion in things that are sort of uh you know, I'd say dunya related, really and truly ask yourselves, is this really going to soothe your heart? You must look for that hobbies that are going to draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it could be that hike that you take in the morning. It could be, you know, that sunrise, sunset. I find these to be very, very, alhamdulillah, beautiful. You know, you're looking at the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mashallah, Ustad Yusra was there in Cape Town in South Africa, subhanAllah. The nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Cape Town. It is the reason why a lot of scholars, when they go to Cape Town, they say that, you know, it's it's almost like after, you know, Aqsa and Makkah, Medina, they say Cape Town is after, subhanAllah. Because of the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in Cape Town. And, you know, subhanAllah, we're looking at this. For me, this is one of the biggest ways you know, the strongest ways for me to actually, it's, a, it's almost like a means to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a way, everyone has their own ways. So this is also very, very important. So, you know, I don't want to sort of take up everyone, everyone's time here today. Today, alhamdulillah, was, you know, uh, we had an amazing, amazing reminder by Ustad Yusra from, uh, from America, all the way from America. Currently there, it's probably about 3 p.m. You know, alhamdulillah, they got the many, many hours left for iftar. Uh, in UK, you know, we've got, uh, subhanAllah, We've got probably about, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, I think, a few minutes, subhanAllah, left. So, inshallah, we're going to wrap up here. Um, I, I envy you guys right now. I'm envying you guys now. <laughs> Allah, you know, alhamdulillah, you got to, inshallah, make dua for us and all the beloved uh, brothers and sisters that joined us here today. Many, uh, if not all, joined to listen to you. Um, without doubt, Thank alhamdulillah, you. and take benefit, alhamdulillah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and, and grant your afiyah in all your work and endeavors and yeah. protect you, inshallah. And uh, Jazakallah to all the brothers and sisters, please, in these last few minutes before iftar, remember, make this dua constantly. Allahumma inna ka'afu kun tabibu al-afu fa'afu anna ya kareem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that you want in these few minutes before uh, you open your fast, inshallah, in a few minutes. Those are in other parts of the world. Same applies for you, inshallah. And, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us whatever we want, inshallah, if it is meant for us, if he wants it to be for us, inshallah, he will grant it to us, he will give it to you. Be it now, be it five years down the line, be it ten years down the line. Do not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallah feekum to all the beloved brothers and sisters, to our dear beloved Ustada, uh, Ustada Yusra Kandil, uh, all the way from America. Inshallah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الخليل 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 الخليل